In the last segment, we saw that the El Gamal public key encryption system is chosen ciphertext secure under a somewhat strange assumption. In this segment, we're going to look at variants of El Gamal that have a much better chosen ciphertext security analysis. Now, I should say that over the past decade, there's been a ton of research on constructing uh, public key encryptions that are chosen ciphertext secure. I actually debated for some time on how to best present this here, and finally I decided to kind of show you a survey of the main results from the last decades, specifically as they apply to the El Gamal system. And then at the end of the module, I suggest a number of papers that you can look at for further reading. So let me start by reminding you how the El Gamal encryption system works. I'm sure by now you all remember how El Gamal works, but just to be safe, let me remind you that uh, key generation El Gamal uh, picks a random generator, a random exponent from Zn, and then the public key is simply the generator and this element g to the a, whereas the secret key is simply uh, the discrete log of h base g, this value a. Now the way we encrypt is we pick a random exponent b from Zn, we compute the hash of g to the b and h to the b, and again I remind you that h to the b is the Diffie-Hellman secret, g to the a b, and then we actually encrypt the message using a symmetric encryption system with the key k that's derived from the hash function. And finally the output ciphertext is g to the b and the symmetric ciphertext. The way we decrypt uh, is, you know, as we've seen before, basically by hashing uh, u and the Diffie-Hellman secret, decrypting the symmetric system and outputting the message m. Now, in the last segment, we said that El Gamal is chosen ciphertext secure under this funny interactive Diffie-Hellman assumption. I'm not going to remind you what that assumption is here, but I'll just say that this theorem kind of raises two very natural questions. The first question is, can we prove CCA security of El Gamal just based on the standard computational Diffie-Hellman assumption? Namely, that given g to the a, g to the b, you can't compute g to the a, b. Can we prove chosen ciphertext security just based on that? And it turns out there are two ways to do it. The first option is to use a group where the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption is hard, but is provably equivalent to the interactive Diffie-Hellman assumption. And it turns out it's actually not that hard to construct such groups. These groups are called bilinear groups. And in such groups, we know that the El Gamal system is chosen ciphertext secure strictly based under the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption, at least in the random oracle model. I'll tell you that these bilinear groups are actually constructed from very special elliptic curves. Uh, so there's a bit more algebraic structure that enables us to prove this equivalence of IDH uh, and CDH. But in general, who knows? Maybe you don't want to use elliptic curve groups. Maybe you want to use ZP star for some reason. So it's a pretty natural question to ask, can we change the El Gamal system such that chosen ciphertext security of El Gamal now can be proven uh, directly based on CDH? Uh, for any group where CDH is hard, now without assuming any additional structure about the group. And it turns out the answer is yes, and there's kind of an elegant construction called twin El Gamal. So let me show you how twin El Gamal works. Um, it's a very simple variation of El Gamal that does the following. Again, in key generation, we choose a random generator, but this time we're going to choose two exponents, A1 and A2, as the secret key. So the secret key is going to consist of these two exponents, A1 and A2. And now the public key, of course, is going to consist of our generator. And then we're going to release g to the a1 and g to the a2. So remember that in regular El Gamal, what the public key is simply g to the a and that's it. Here we have two exponents, a1 and a2, and therefore we, we release both g to the a1 and g to the a2. Now the way we encrypt, you notice the public key here is one element longer than regular El Gamal. The way we encrypt using this public key is actually very similar to regular El Gamal. We choose a random b. And now what we'll hash is actually not just g to the b and h1 to the b, but in fact g to the b, h1 to the b, and h2 to the b. Okay, so we're basically hashing three elements instead of two elements. And then we basically encrypt the message using the derived symmetric encryption key. And as usual, we output g to the b and c as our final ciphertext. How do we decrypt? Well, so now the secret key consists of these two exponents, a1 and a2. And the ciphertext consists of u and the symmetric ciphertext c. So let me ask you a puzzle and see if you can figure out how to derive the symmetric encryption key k just given the secret key and the value u. So it's kind of a cute puzzle, and I hope everybody worked out the solution, which is that basically what we can do is we can take u to the power of a1, and that is basically g to the b a1, and u to the a2, which is g to the b a2. And that basically gives us exactly the same values as h1 to the b and h2 to the b. So this way, the decryptor arrives at the same symmetric key that the encryptor did. Then he decrypts the ciphertext using the symmetric system and finally outputs the message m. 
So you notice this is a very simple modification to regular El Gamal. All we do is we stick one more element in the public key. When we do the hashing, we hash one more element as opposed to just two elements. We hash uh, three elements, and similarly we do during decryption. And nothing else changes. The ciphertext is the same length as before, uh, and that's it. Now the amazing thing is that this simple modification allows us to now prove chosen ciphertext security directly based on the standard computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. Okay? Still, we're going to need to assume that uh, we have a symmetric encryption system that provides authenticated encryption, and that the hash function that we're using is an ideal hash function in what we call a random oracle. But nevertheless, given that, we can prove chosen ciphertext security strictly based on the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. So now, what's the cost of this? Of course, if you think about this, during encryption and decryption, the encryptor has to do one more exponentiation, and the decryptor has to do one more exponentiation. So the encryptor now does three exponentiations instead of two, and the decryptor does two exponentiations instead of one. So the question is now, now it's a philosophical question, is this extra effort worth it? Uh, so you do more work during encryption and decryption, and your public key is a little bit bigger, but that doesn't really matter. The work doing encryption and decryption is more significant. And as a result, you get chosen ciphertext security based on kind of a more natural assumption, namely computational Diffie-Hellman, as opposed to this odd-looking interactive Diffie-Hellman assumption. But is it worth it? It's kind of the question is, uh, are there groups where CDH holds, but IDH does not hold? If there were such groups, then it would definitely be worth it, because in those groups, the twin algamal would be secure, but the regular algamal would not be CCA secure. But unfortunately, we don't know of any such groups. And in fact, as far as we know, it's certainly possible that any group where CDH holds, IDH also holds. So the answer is that really we don't know whether this extra cost is worth it or not. But nevertheless, this is a cute result that shows that if you wanted to achieve chosen ciphertext security directly from CDH, you can do it without too many changes to the El Gamal system. The next question is whether we can get rid of this assumption that the hash function is an ideal hash function, namely it's a random oracle. And this is actually a huge topic. There's a lot of work in this area on how to build efficient public key encryption systems that are chosen ciphertext secure without random oracles. This is a very active area of research, as I said, in the past decade and even longer. And I'll mention that as it applies to El Gamal, there are basically, again, two families of constructions. The first construction is a construction that uses these special groups called these bilinear groups that I just mentioned before. It turns out the extra structure of these bilinear groups allows us to build very efficient chosen ciphertext secure systems without uh, referring to random oracles. And as I said, at the end of the module, I point to a number of papers that explain how to do that. This is quite an interesting construction, but it would take me several hours to kind of explain how it works. The other alternative is actually to use groups where uh, a stronger assumption called the decision Diffie-Hellman assumption holds. Again, I'm not going to define this assumption here. I'll just tell you that this assumption actually holds in subgroups of ZP star. In particular, if we look at a prime order subgroup of ZP star, the decision Diffie-Hellman assumption seems to hold in those groups. And then in those groups, we can actually build a variant of El Gamal uh, called the kramer schub system that is chosen ciphertext secure under the decision Diffie-Hellman assumption without random oracles. Again, this is a beautiful, beautiful result, but again, it would take a couple of hours to explain, and so I'm not going to do that here. This is probably one of these things that I'm going to leave to either the advanced topics or to an advanced course that we'll do at a later time. Uh, but again, I point to a paper at the end of the module just in case you want to read more about this. So here is a list of papers that provides uh, more reading material. So if you want to read about Diffie-Hellman assumptions, I guess I wrote a paper about this a long time ago that talks about various assumptions related to, to Diffie-Hellman, and in particular studies the decision Diffie-Hellman assumption. Uh, if you want to learn about how to build chosen ciphertext secure systems from decision Diffie-Hellman and assumptions like it, there's a very cute paper uh, by Kramer and Shoup back uh, from 2002 that shows how to do it. This is, again, a very highly recommended paper. If you want to learn how to build chosen ciphertext security from these bilinear groups, then the paper to read is the one uh, cited here, which actually uses a general mechanism called identity-based encryption, which very surprisingly turns out to actually give us chosen ciphertext security almost for free. So once we build identity-based encryption, chosen ciphertext security follows immediately. And that's covered in this paper that I, I describe here. The twin Diffie-Hellman construction and its proof is described in this paper that I referenced here. And finally, if you want to kind of see a, a very recent paper 
that gives a very general framework for building uh, chosen cyphertic secure systems uh, using what's called extractable hash proofs. Then there's again a nice paper by Hote Kui that was just recently published. I definitely recommend reading. They all, all have very, very elegant ideas in them. I wish I could cover all of them in the basic course, but I'm going to have to leave some of these to the more advanced course or perhaps uh, the more advanced topics at the end of this course. Okay, so I'll stop here, and in the next segment, I'm going to tie El Gamal and RSA encryption together so that you see how the two kind of follow from a more general principle.